19 minutes after 7 o'clock. It is Monday, November 7th, 2016. Good morning. You're listening to the radio, and your radio is tuned to WOCA The Source, broadcasting live from the Paddock Mall, where it is 60 degrees. Today's forecast, let's see what it says. A 20% chance of rain, partly cloudy skies, highs around 81 degrees, and lows tonight around 60 degrees. I'll tell you the rest in just a little bit. Good morning, Robin. Good morning, good morning, good morning. You had a fun weekend. Yeah, it was huge. I can't Absolutely. Wait to, can't wait Almost. to hear about it. Uh, let's see, tomorrow's forecast, and let's see the rest of the week. Oh, it's a little bit cool this week. Oh. Highs today are 81, lows, t- I mean, highs tomorrow 78. I know that's only three degrees difference. Uh-huh. It just when it's in the 70s as the highs, it seems cool, doesn't it? It does. So. Very much so. What are you, taping things together? Oh, yeah, it's a public service announcement. Oh, okay. I'm so how are you? Oh, I'm good. Good, 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 good. Uh, you went to see a hockey game. Yes, I did. My very first one ever. Very first hockey game. And you went to see the Tampa Bay Lightning? Yep. And yep. Uh, do you have a favorite player now? Uh, no, I, I don't know their names. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know Was their there names. A favorite the moment? Was there a favorite moment? Uh, I guess when the, the, the new guy scored his first goal ever. Oh, the new guy. There was a new guy. Yeah, there was. He's twenty two, and there was a new player, and he scored his first goal. Every, every everybody was cheering and stomping their feet, and it was really fabulous. They had lightning bolts coming from the ceiling. It's just so cool. And they and they played. What was the team's name? They played. It, they were from New Jersey. I, I don't remember. Uh, Devils, the New Jersey Devils. That was it. And so they can have the word Devils, but we can't have Devil Rays in our baseball team. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I thought that's the most ridiculous thing ever. <laughs> Ever, and your team won? The team you were rooting for won? Yep, yep. four to one. Oh, it was, was nice. just so cool. Was my nice. daughter treated myself and my mother was as you know. Was it cold in there? I know. It, it was really cold. Yeah? It was really cold. I uh, love the, you know, once the action, like, would ebb a little bit, all of these guys would come out on skates with these big push brooms and clean up the ice mm-hmm. and the guys mm-hmm. with shovels, and I had never seen that, you know, the... The sexy cheerleaders were zipping around on the Zambonis and waving their pom poms. And 19,000 plus were in the stadium. It was a sellout crowd. Everybody from babies to, you know, retirees were mm-hmm, in mm-hmm. the audience, and it was just so great. Such fun. Sounds sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah, a lot of fun. The best part was when, when nobody took a knee during the national anthem. <laughs> okay. And the veterans, some veterans were honored. and But the best part was when, when we were singing the national anthem, there was this huge flag, it, and it was as big as as the, the whole uh, width of the bottom section. Uh-huh, and the uh-huh. flag was just unfurling. So it was like the whole half of the bottom section was just had this American flag. They were, you know, how they they carry people in Mm -hmm. crowds. Well, they were carrying this flag, and they were unfurling it as it was going. And it was such a chilling moment. It was absolutely outstanding. Huge. Cool stuff. And then, of course, our veterans. My mother and I went last night to the Kingdom of the Sun concert band uh, veterans, you know, under the stars performance. And it was just amazing. Uh, Les Muncaster, of course, the conductor, Marsha Muncaster, his wife, she sang a few songs. They did a lot of songs. And and then when they did the medley for all the uh, services, whichever song played, those servicemen stood up. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And it was just so emotional last night. I mean, it's uh, the you know the Kingdom of the Sun concert band, they're always free, they're always professionals, and you can't beat them. They're just absolutely incredible. Fireworks, too, by the way. It was nice. Nice weather? Perfect weather. The whole weekend had pretty good weather. Right? Yeah, perfect. And we started it off with a very, very fun event when Santa Claus arrived Friday oh, here at the mall. Oh, yeah, that was the funnest Joe, ever. Joe joined us as we uh, sang outside. I'm so glad he did. It was just so much fun. Oh, yeah. And uh, and that Santa Claus is really a good, mm-hmm. good Santa Claus. Love the Santa Claus. And what a great way to kick off uh, Christmas season. And the the whole weekend was Friday night. I mean, Buddy the Clydesdale was there with the sleigh with Santa Claus. It and seemed a little early for it was, to kick yeah. off the Christmas season. But, mm-hmm. you know, this is the mall. And the mall has to kind of jump up a little bit ahead of everything else to get the, the whole season going. Because yeah. it's, a, it's a retail outlet. So. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. But make, that set the tone. The fun of that moment Friday night here it at the fun. mall set the tone for the whole weekend. And uh, thank you so much, Rhonda, and all you guys. Uh, you're fabulous. So we were not and able Santa to get Claus. to. We were not able to get the first Friday art walk because we, in this event over here was bigger than we thought it was going to be. It was so. huge and fun, and the children were had got jingle bells and hot chocolate and cookies <laughs> and cupcakes and wow. 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 All right. Super let me, event. Let me tell you what we're doing this morning. Today is the day before Eli. Election day. Yes. And so from 7.35 till 8, what I would like to do is talk about the different races, the presidential candidates mm-hmm. and uh, the local candidates. And uh, I would like to have you all out there make a pitch for whoever it is you're pitching for. Now, there's a rule, and it's not ours, that if you are the candidate, mm-hmm. <laughs> you cannot call in. No, nobody's going to, you know, check your ID, so I won't have any way of knowing if, mm-hmm. <laughs> if you're one of the candidates. But Yeah, right, right. But yeah, you can't call in a picture yourself, but your wife can call in, your husband can call in, uh, I, gu- I guess your, your uh, ventriloquist dummy could call in. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> hint, hint. <laughs> but, uh, but, uh, but otherwise, uh, I want to hear who you would like to pitch for, if you want to pitch for the sh- local sheriff's race, the local, uh, the, the national uh, presidential race, you want to pitch for anybody running for any of the other offices and, and I'll go through them if, if you want to make a pitch for or against any of the amendments uh, we've done this, this is kind of a, a, a tradition for us I guess the day before election day is always to kind of just open the phone lines and let you guys do this and since the 25 minute segment goes really fast mm-hmm. I'm going to um, include Galen in on this too so when we okay. have Galen on at 8.05 so we'll go 7.35 till the news at 8 after the news, Galen will be on. We'll, of course, talk about his weekend and and, uh, and, the, and the bloodmobile, of course, things like that. But if you want and you want to continue doing that, you can continue to call in and, and make a pitch for whoever it is. If you're for Hillary, I want to hear it. Mm-hmm. If you're for Trump, I want to hear it. If you're for one of the third-party candidates, I want to hear it. Mm-hmm. Because tomorrow is the day. Tomorrow is the day. If anybody's not decided yet, they might want to hear what you have to say. Mm-hmm. Maybe you haven't given a whole lot of thought to the two sheriff's candidates. Mm-hmm. This is a great way. I have some information about them, but if you want to call in and, and, and make a pitch for them, uh, we would love to hear from you. Mm-hmm. No, the only rule is, the way, from, as far as I can, I'm concerned, the way I understand it, is um, you can't call in if you are the candidate, right? Isn't that the only rule? Yes. Okay. Yep. So, and exactly. uh, yeah, so it's just that, and you know, and expect other people to perhaps uh, challenge you if you say something. <laughs> Robert and I might be the ones challenging you. We don't <laughs> do that too often, but <laughs> once in a while, yeah. So it's just we're just chatting. So that's what we're doing this morning. Uh, Eight thirty-five. After we're done with that, uh, we will have news bites. That's where we don't offer any opinion. Mm-hmm. Bern Pareso brightens our studio with her charm. She's our medical reporter from Good For All Marketing. She'll be talking to us about that. And we've asked Bern to stay an extra half hour today. <laughs> yes, we have. I mean, an extra a, 10 minutes. Extra 50, yeah, 10 minutes. Yeah. Because Bern is from the Philippines. And I found this article a couple of weeks ago mm-hmm. titled 21 Things That Are Everyday Occurrences in the Philippines That You, as a non Filipino, might just find a little bit interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so uh, I want to ask uh, Bern about those things since she is from the Philippines. Uh, Charles Schmidt at 935. Charles is a retired Air Force officer. He's going to talk to us about the American Legion calling on the uh, Congress and the President to modernize VA benefits and to strengthen the military in general. Well, mm-hmm. you, you might, you might <laughs> want to wait. <laughs> tomorrow, tomorrow we'll have a new name. Yeah. Uh, of course, he won't. He or she won't be president until, until what? January is when they swore him in. Yeah. Yeah. Brian Slovan at nine fifty. Brian is a registered financial consultant speaking to us about investments. Uh, Kevin Prislak, is that right? Is a, a humorist and uh, oh, it's a fun book. <laughs> It's the effort list. All the things you can skip before you die. Yep. Instead of the bucket list. Yes. It's the F it list. <laughs> yeah. You, you got to fill in the F because I can't say it. No. Uh, so that's Joe's it. Just holding his breath. All the things you can skip before you die. That's kind of a funny idea, right? It is very funny. Hmm. Yeah. I can think of a few. <laughs> I, I always thought I wanted to own a Corvette. Ah, skip that. Uh-huh. Forget that. That's not on my list anymore. Oh, that's cool. I thought it would be cool. 
Sylvia Melendez Klinger at 1035. Sylvia is the founder of Hispanic Foods Communications. Hispanic Foods Communications. I know. Food that talks to you. <laughs> well, food's been talking to me all weekend, let me tell you. Me too. I, I answered the call. <laughs> did, you have good, did you have good food down at the, at the stadium? Oh, yeah. It was. What'd you have? Hot wings. Sounds good. Uh, Peter uh, Van Toon is coming out to talk to us about drilling in the Arctic Ocean. Mm -hmm. uh, fun with Joe. It's I, I, I. Every answer has the word I in it. And Ooh. then, uh, of course, with Galen, we're going to talk about the uh, elections tomorrow. We'll be right back. This is WOCA Ocala. <laughs> News Radio. I'm Carmen Roberts. The FBI's closed its email investigation, but with one day to go, Donald Trump still hammering Hillary Clinton on the issue. Unbelievable. Unbelievable what she gets away with. Trump in Michigan last night. And now it's up to the American people to deliver justice at the ballot box on November 8th. Clinton's trying to sound a positive note as the last hours of the campaign near. The Clinton campaign expressing relief, but privately saying the damage may already be done with 37 million votes already cast. Fox's Jennifer Griffin in Cleveland. The first woman U.S. Attorney General dies. Janet Reno died today in Miami at age 78. And they're still assessing damage from last night's 5.0 magnitude earthquake centered near Cushing, Oklahoma. Only minor injuries reported. Fox News, we report, you decide. It's all women. It's all talk. Well, here we go again. It's really bad judgment. Issues, not insults. She should be ashamed of herself. The time for talk is over now. It's America's turn to make its voice heard. Fox News Channel has election night covered, fair and balanced, up-to-the-minute exit polls, breaking race results and powerful analysis from the best team in politics. Plus, it all happens live from our new state-of-the-art studio. Fox News Channel election night covered because we are America's election headquarters. Weeknight, Kelly brings the heat. Developing tonight, a Kelly file exclusive. This is breaking news. We're just getting this. Inside today's most explosive stories. That's not the way it was supposed to go down. Getting answers and challenging the status quo. Sir, it's a back and forth. I'm not just going to give you the platform for a soliloquy. Don't come on here and spit. I will leave that to you to decide. Powerful inside. Fair and balanced. Megan Kelly taking prime time to the next degree. Join me for the Kelly File weeknights at nine. Hi, my name is Erica Olstein. I'm a doctor of acupuncture and oriental medicine. Do you have a gout-ridden toe or bowels that move too slow, creaky knees, or how about an asthmatic wheeze? Then acupuncture is sure to please. Come visit me, your primary care physician, Erica Olstein, at A Better You Healthcare. Call me at 352-615-5566. That's 352-615-5566. Hey everybody, did you know that there is a black bear sanctuary right here in the Ocala National Forest? While FWC has postponed the bear hunt this year, there are still perils that these magnificent creatures face. Forest Animal Rescue is finishing their state sanctuary on 80 acres in the Ocala National Forest. The last phase of construction is the on-site clinic to help with bear cub rehabilitation and release. Forest Animal Rescue is a 501c3. Your contribution is entirely tax deductible. Visit Forest Animal Rescue. Experience Christmas at Gaylord Palm. Some of my Fujifilm Instax, November 15th through January 1st. Enjoy spectacular holiday decor, dining, and entertainment, including ice, with an all-new theme featuring a Charlie Brown Christmas, Cirque Dreams Unwrapped Stage Show, Breakfast with Charlie Brown and Friends, Alpine Rush Snow Tubing, and much more. It's everything Christmas in one extraordinary place. Tickets and overnight packages, including priority extra cool hour admission to ice, are on sale now at Christmas at GaylordPalms.com. Christmas time is here, and this holiday season, Gaylord Palms puts a brand new twist on a Christmas classic. It's Ice, presented by Pepsi, featuring a Charlie Brown Christmas by Charles Schultz, November 18th through January 1st. See the whole Peanuts gang carved in over 2 million pounds of colorful ice, including Snoopy's decorated doghouse and dancing at the holiday play rehearsal. Your awe-inspiring experience concludes with the wonder of the nativity and ice. For tickets and packages, visit Christmas at GaylordPalms.com. A young woman contemplating having an abortion is told by society that whether she has her baby or not, it is her choice. 
House of One in Faith in Ocala wants to give that young woman a place to live in comfort during her trying time to help her know that God's love is abundant and that He is not ashamed of her in any way. The House of One in Faith is free and confidential. For more information, call 352-687-8895. Hi, I'm Seth with AA Lock, Dock, and Security. Have you ever thought about the locks or security on your house or business? Have you ever wondered why the keys to your new car cost so much? Well, at AA Lock, Dock, and Security, we can help with securing your valuables. We can even replace those expensive transponder keys. We can give you the knowledge that no one else will. Call AA Lock, Dock, and Security at 867-1965. That's 867-1965. All right, 25 minutes before 8 o'clock. It's uh, a little bit cloudy out there, but only a 20% chance of rain, and I guess temperatures will be relatively mild this morning. All right, today is the day before Election Day. If you've already voted, then your Election Day has, has passed. Um, but I, I guess, let me, you know what I should do? I should take a quick look at the uh, Vote Marion list and see uh, how many of us in this county have already voted, because they've, they've got the... They've got the statistics on there, so oh, let, me, let me do that really quickly. Uh, this is I wanted to, I wanted to use this time. Uh, I do have other news uh, news that I can bring to you. Uh, yeah, but this is important. Yeah, I want you all to call in and tell me who you're voting for, why you're voting for, why you think we should vote for your uh, favorite candidate. And I'll bet you the lines were long on Saturday because that was the last day of early voting, and I'm just guessing that that those lines were pretty long. So, so far, let me see. Uh, hmm. So far, according to the uh, Supervisor of Election Office here in Marion County, 36,307 people have so far mailed in their votes. Um, 66,200 have done early voting. Wow, that percentage and, is really good. And 38 people have done provisional voting. Oh, I don't know what that is. So the phone number is 622-9622 if you want to call in. The area code is 352. 305. What am I down Ooh, in Miami? Miami. <laughs> Maybe Good. we're going there. <laughs> Good morning. Oh, did I answer the phone wrong? Oh, let me do it. Let me do it right. <laughs> Give me a weekend off and I forget how to do everything. Good morning. You're on the air. Good morning. Hey. Well, first of all, I guess I say I, vo I voted for Trump a couple of weeks ago. Uh -huh. I haven't changed my mind. Uh -huh. uh, I still support him. And... Um, the reason I, I support him is I, what we've had for the last how many years isn't working. So I, I don't think I had any other choice but to try to for change. And I guess I feel I was pretty right in this because if you look at the money spent in a campaign, Trump had under two hundred million, which sounds like a lot, but the campaigning it's not. Hillary had almost six hundred million, mm -hmm. and they're neck to neck. So if he could take the money in government and do what he's did with the campaign, we're gonna be in good shape. Hmm. Okay. I like that perspective. I mean, he, she spent almost three times as much as him bringing in movie stars and actors, and she's not coming because they love her, she's paying them. Well, right. 600 billion. And, yeah, you know? and I, can, so, hear, I yeah. can hear somebody saying, yeah, but he had fame on his side, but so did she. They were both famous in the oh, beginning, yeah. so. Well, sure I just like what he did with the money. You know, the media, not, not you guys, but you know, the advertising media was very upset because they were saying that he spent $13 million on hats and only four million dollars on mailers. Well, you get a mailer, you throw up the trash. You get a hat, you wear it. <laughs> exactly. So then you become a, a walking Trump billboard. There you go. <laughs> so I think the man, you know, I think they did a campaign right. You know, I mean, they're neck to neck in the polls. All right. And spent the third. You know. Okay, you guys take care. Hey, thank you, Lynn. Appreciate that. And that's what I'm looking for right now. If you want to call in and, and pitch for your candidate, and we're, we're not going to pick on you. If you if you mention Hillary, please don't think that for no, at all. I want no. to hear what you have to say. And uh, I, I don't want you to think that we're trying to play politics here at all. We're just trying to open the phone lines so that if you if you can't, if you're what's what's the word I'm looking for passionate about any of the candidates, whether it's Trump and Hillary, whether it's uh, Mr. Billy William Woods, mm -hmm. Mr. Dennis McFatton. Uh, if you want to make a pitch for one of those guys, we, it's a pretty big deal in Marion County to have a new sheriff. 
Oh yeah, it uh, is a big so deal. we have these two guys, and if you want to pitch for one of them, or uh, or I don't think there's a third possibility in their case. No. David Elsperman and Cynthia Moody are running for the clerk of the court. If you want to pitch for one of them, mm-hmm. I'd love to hear from you. Why? Why do you want voters to vote for the choice that you are confident with? Uh, John Townsend is running for county commission. Mm-hmm. District 1. Uh, David Moore is the incumbent in that seat. Uh, if you want to pitch for one of them, the phone line is open. 622-9622. I'm trying my hardest to not do a whole lot of opinion on our side, but we will. I mean, we're mm-hmm. if this is open time. we got our coffee. We've got, we're have got just friends here. Uh, County Commission District 3. Jeff Gold is the only one on the ballot, but there are two write-in candidates. If you want to make a pitch for Joe Brown or Richard Brown, mm-hmm. the second. Are they related? Uh, I don't know. Uh, but anyway. Curious. Curious. Jeff Gold, Joe Brown, and Richard Brown. All three colors. I like that. Oh. Golden Brown. I like that. I uh, like anyway, that. if you want to pitch for one of them, call in. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Thomas Cartwright and Richard Markle are both wanting uh, the District 2 seat in the Soil and Water. And there, and I'm sure there are probably some congressional candidates out there that you might have a, a thought about. Good morning. You're on the air. Yeah, good morning, guys. Hi, Hugh. See, uh, I have a vote for Trump because my wife said so. That's <laughs> <laughs> so why you have a good marriage, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, I want to keep peace in the family, but <laughs> I would have voted for him anyways. Uh, but kind of the big reason is uh, I think we need a lot of changes. I'm very much concerned about the military going down the drain and uh, so many other things and the relationships between the minorities and, and, uh, and the people. Uh, it's just uh, we, we really feel in so many areas in the last several years uh, – uh, under the present administration, and uh, I just, uh, I, I really feel that Trump can uh, kind of thing, change things around, at least I'm hoping so. So let's uh, let's vote and pray for a Trump victory, and uh, 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 let's hope for all the things he's talking about and promising uh, come true. All right. Thank you so much. Appreciate the call. Okay. Yeah, this is campaign time. You can campaign to your favorite mm-hmm. candidate, uh, whether it's the presidential candidates or the congressional candidates. Uh, the county commission candidates, any of the amendments you want to pitch for or mm-hmm. against. Uh, we we expressed our opinion on Amendment 1, which yes. is we were against it. But if you want to express why you're for it, feel free to call in. That's what we're doing right now. We've done this every every election cycle that I can remember, the day before Election Day. And in Tampa, there was a lot of construction going on, and I couldn't believe all the flags that were huge that said... Uh, 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 Trump and uh, Pence on there. I mean, you had these huge cranes alongside the construction on the interstate with, you know, on, on the end of the booms, you know, with the the uh, support for Trump. You had construction going on within the city of Tampa, support for Trump. And usually uh, labor is represented by the Democrats. But I was really surprised when I saw a lot of uh, labor outfits down there you know, for mm-hmm. Trump, yeah, for a Republican. Yeah, so that was very interesting to me. Uh, again, phone lines are open. I'm, tr- I'm trying to kind of keep out of it a little bit. Um, um, but you, I, I'll start talking if, if nobody wants to call in. The number is 622-9622. I really do want to hear from you. John mm-hmm. Townsend, uh, David Moore. It's a it's an important race right now. Uh, David uh, Dennis McFadden. Uh, Junior, uh, William Billy Woods, both running for the Marion County Sheriff. It's an important race. So. It's very the sheriff, very important. We f- we focused so much on the presidential campaign uh, candidates that we we kind of uh, glazed over these guys, but we did uh, talk to them uh, for a few, talk about them and talk to them. We talked to Mr. McFadden. Mm-hmm. Mr. Woods never came in. Good morning. You're on the air. Yeah. Good morning. Can I get off off, off the air? You want to talk to us off the air? Yes, please. Well, you have to wait till the break. Can you call back in about three minutes? Sure. Okay. Yeah, you, you, okay. Maybe he's shy. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, again, if you want to get on the air and talk to us or talk to the listeners and make a pitch for whoever candidate you are mm-hmm. uh, pitching for, the only rules that we have to abide by is that if you are the candidate, you're not supposed to be calling in. Right. Right. That's, that's the way it is. And we invited all the candidates to come on the air. There were a few that took us up on our offer. And uh, thank you so much for coming in and letting your voice be heard. We uh, need to hear all sides. So Election Day is uh, 24 hours away. Remember, the early voting is obviously over. Uh, and if you heard us talking to you about where the early voting places were, um, that is no longer where you can vote. Now mm-hmm. you have to vote in your assigned precinct. 
Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Not today. To- mm-hmm. I know. I know. Tomorrow you have to. F- so I, and I know most of you know that. I'm just. Mm-hmm. I'm just. Just kind of reminding you. Uh, so uh, also Janet Reno passed away. Did you see this? I heard you say that in your news. Janet Reno. I mean, I remember whole with the her with the whole Elian Gonzalez thing and. And uh, gosh, what did you say? Seventy-eight. She was. That was seventy-eight years old. Yeah. Yeah. I, I am always, you know, saddened when people pass away. She was the first woman okay. to serve as U.S. Attorney General in the epicenter of several political storms during the Clinton mm-hmm. administration. Yeah. The one, the, uh, the one, the the Ilian Gonzalez thing was kind of weird, but the biggest one was the Waco. Thing. Oh the yes, branch, the Branch Davidians. Exactly. That, that just seems so unnecessary to burn that place down. Oh yeah. That, unless, unless of course they did it themselves. That's that was unnecessary though. Also. Yeah. All right, we'll take a little break. And uh, what we're doing this morning is so what we do pretty much every year, the day before election day. Well, not every year. So, yeah, sometimes it is every year, mm-hmm. uh, but especially a presidential election day before we get you to campaign. We'll be right back. <laughs> The weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Safe boating is no accident. Onshore breeze continues, so watch for rough surf and rip currents at the beaches. Otherwise, it's going to be a partly sunny day, high of 78 to 81. Patchy clouds tonight, a low 58 to 68. A mix of sun and clouds tomorrow looks nice, a high of 78 to 81. Partly sunny and high of 75 to 80 Wednesday. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Maggie Johnson. Edwards wins a rain-shortened race in Texas, allowing him to contend for his first Spring Cup trophy. This is the Monday Morning Race Refresher, sponsored by Coca-Cola. Checkered flag for Tony Stewart. We embarked on this journey in 1999. Tony Stewart just has to keep it on the rails, and he's going home a winner. We've shared a Coke together in Victory Lane what seems like countless times. He's won the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series Championship. Through championships and success, you've connected us with NASCAR fans all over the world. So here's to you, Smoke. It's been a great ride, and we're not finished yet. Coca-Cola, the official soft drink of NASCAR. Joe Gibbs racing driver Carl Edwards rebounded nicely from a 36th place finish last week in Martinsville with a win last night at the Texas Motor Speedway. Edwards took the lead for the final time following the final round of pit stops and hung on to the top spot until the rains hit shortening the race and clinching Edwards' spot in the championship four at Homestead Miami Speedway in two weeks. Man, this is more than special. This is uh, this is Texas, which is a very special place to me to win, uh, to anybody in the garage. And then what we had to do tonight, win, win moving on to the championship. Just uh, really proud of my guys. We performed sure. It was a good test for Homestead, and I'm ready to go race for this championship. Behind Edwards at the finish were Joey Logano, Martin Truix Jr., Chase Elliott, and Kyle Busch in the top five. Jimmy Johnson and Carl Edwards are locked into the championship four in Miami, while Logano and Kyle Busch are tied for the third and fourth spots in points, while drivers currently outside looking in include Matt Kenseth by one point, Denny Hamlin by two points, Kevin Harvick by 18 points, and Kurt Busch by 34 points, heading to Phoenix International Raceway this Sunday. I'm Kyle Rickey. This has been the Monday Morning Race Refresher on the Motor Racing Network. Hi, this is JP from Penn Flooring here in Ocala. I would like to invite you to come in and visit our spacious showroom where we have solutions for every style and budget. From wall-to-wall carpet to hardwood floors and tiles, we have an unsurpassed selection of flooring. At Penn Flooring, we've provided quality customer service with a family touch for over 25 years. Visit our website at penflooring.com or come by our showroom, 1201 Southwest 17th Street, just over the bridge. Penn Flooring, quality customer service with a family touch. All right, 12 minutes before 8 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, phone lines are open if you want to campaign for a candidate that you are supporting. Uh, again, it can be the presidential candidates, and that would be any of them, not just uh, Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump. But there are three other candidates running. Um, and uh, from what we call third parties, we call all the other parties third parties, I guess. Um, there's also the sheriff's office. There are some congressional offices uh, that are up for grabs. I have to figure out which... Uh, I, I'm always I always forget which districts represent our listening area, but yeah. I, I'll do that. Let me uh, take your calls. Um, all right, good. And we had a call off the air, by the way. And I just want to encourage you if you 
if you think you're disagreeing with Robert and I, A, first of all, that's okay. We always invite people to disagree with us. Mm -hmm. Um, But that's not what today is about. Today is about, on this show, is about just expressing who you're supporting and why you're supporting. And the gentleman, I could understand him perfectly, but he had a... Uh, I guess a complex about he has a Hispanic accent, which is perfect. I, I mean, we live in Florida, of course. Yes. Go, good morning. You're on the air. Yes, good morning. I'm calling back. Well, I'm so glad you called back. Okay, and you, you are supporting Hillary, right? Oh, yeah. Well, I, I didn't want to support anybody, but that's the only thing that's left okay. out there. I mean, that's decent. Uh, Donald Trump, all he wants to do is push that button to make the third world war. He's a dictator. I feel like he's a Nazi. He wants to take over the country. He wants, he wants to do what he wants to do. The thing about women, I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's a disgrace. Um, I just don't feel like he's right for the for government. Um, I'm not against, against, uh, against, I mean, he's fine as a businessman, but he's not going to make it in politics. It's just because he's just, he can't wait to push the button because he's angry at the world. He's angry at people. He's angry at black people. He's angry at Spanish people. Uh, he, that's what he wants to do. He think, he's from Canada. He's not even from here, I guess. I uh, don't know where he's from. But he's, and just because he's white, he wants to give you white people. He wants to help the rich and make the poor poor. Uh, I mean, I, I didn't care for Hillary Clinton either, but that's the only thing that we had to, to pick from. Yeah, that's, that's, it's a better choice than... Trump. Okay, so that's who that's who you you're pu- you're pushing for. Well, I appreciate you calling, yeah. and uh, thank you for calling back. I know you were a little bit self conscious about your accent, but you, mm-hmm. you we understand Absolutely. you perfectly. Yeah, perfectly. All right, thank you for that. I appreciate the thank call. You. Right, thank you. Have a great day, guys. All right, thank oh, you. Thank you, sir, so much. And and I just I just want to remind you, I'm not here right today. I mean, some days maybe I would argue with you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> T- today that's not what I want to do. I- I'll be wasting your time if I do that. I want you to have an opportunity to campaign for your candidate, whether mm-hmm. it's the p- presidential race, whether mm-hmm. it's uh, any of the races. I'm exactly. I'm trying to figure out. Uh, Yoho is District 3, right? Yeah. Okay. So I don't see him on the list here. But uh, all right. Good morning. You're on the air. Yeah, good morning. Good morning. Uh, uh, if you're still holding an absentee ballot, a personal, uh, what do you call it, a mail-in ballot, um, you probably need to take it in person up to the supervisor elections office today mm-hmm. or tomorrow uh, because it's probably too late to put it in the mail. Yeah, I'm sure you're right. Yeah, that, that wouldn't it wouldn't get there in time for sure. Yeah, they do have a separate lock box for it. Yes, just they, for have the a, they have a, a white lock box uh, just outside the supervisor of elections office. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay, thank you. Okay, appreciate that. All right, I'm surprised Jim didn't put, uh, pitch for his constitutional guy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, one one of the observations I think I'll make is that um, the third party candidates could have done better mm-hmm. as far as getting their name out there. And I know it's not easy, mm-hmm. and I know it takes money. But you know, not one of them called here. No. And so, if not one of them called here then I'm guessing a lot of them didn't call other stations that would have been glad to have them on. Yeah, you know? sure. That's the part I don't get. When when you have, and w- hey, we have, we have it with our own local offices too. Yeah, we, we have do. our local offices. You know, you have radio stations in your own community that are willing to allow you to use their microphones and their airwaves mm-hmm. so that you can promote your campaigns and you don't call the radio stations. No. You don't contact... Anybody, you wait for them to contact you. You know, you spend all those monies on those mailers. Yeah, which go in the garbage. You know, most of the time. And uh, and you could get on. I mean, most stations. I, you know what? I don't even know if most stations offer a free moment. But I know WOCA has for as long as I've been here. Yeah. We've always offered a free moment for everybody, and and it's ten minutes. And uh, of course, it's too late now. It's the election mm-hmm. day is tomorrow. That's right. But it, it's just one of those things that just boggles my mind. The the. Um, the problem I have with the third party candidates, and just to echo what the uh, the gentleman who was for Hillary had said, that he felt like she was the best choice, but he wouldn't have picked her mm-hmm. yeah, early, earlier. There were probably yeah. some better choices in his in the Democratic Party, mm-hmm. in his his opinion. In in the beginning, when I was looking at the the two candidates, I was really kind of dis, disenfranchised. Is that a good word? By both of them, mm-hmm. and looked at Gary Johnson. 
and then listened to Gary Johnson and thought he doesn't he doesn't get it at all. No, I mean, he doesn't even have some opinions. So I was so I was very disappointed in him. Then I looked at Jill Stein. She was the Green Party candidate, and Jill Stein had marijuana. It was like her big thing. It's like yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, this is more than about marijuana. <laughs> That's right. Well, speaking of marijuana, there is a, a Second Amendment on the list if you want to talk about that one as uh-huh. well. Good morning, you're on the air. Good morning, guys. Hey. Um, well, I tell you, you know, it's amazing to me. I've, I've actually heard people say to me that, uh, I say, have you voted yet? I'm not going to vote. I, I don't, uh, I'm not going to go down there and stand in line for, for four or five hours. I'm going like, you know, four or five hours out of your life to change, you know, to make history. You, you're either way, whatever happens, uh, history is going to be made tomorrow. Either by we are either going to have Donald Trump or we're going to have Hillary Clinton. And history is going to be made. Absolutely. And if you don't go, if you don't go and you don't vote, don't complain ever. Don't ever complain. You know, and there there are people that are going to be like that. They're going to go out and hear them. Well, I'm not going to vote because I don't like either one of them. Well, that don't make any sense at all. I mean, uh, you know, if, whether you think it's uh, your vote's not going to count is is just it's ludicrous. It counts because it's going to count for you. You know, let your voice be heard. Get out and vote regardless, and go spend three or four hours. If you have to spend five hours in that line, do it because it's important. You know, and if you don't vote, don't complain. That's exactly right. Thank you. Appreciate that call. And there were all those options before. I mean, you could do mail-in, you know, the absentee. You could early vote, and then you could vote on the day. So yeah. there is no excuse for a person not to be able there to vote. There was something somebody put on Facebook and it said, uh, not voting is not a way to protest. It's a way to surrender. There you go. So uh, I I'll probably I said like it that. wrong, but but that's uh, mm-hmm. something I, I'd say. You know, that's that's really true. All right, so today, this morning, um, and with five minutes till eight, it's four minutes till eight o'clock, so we'll go to the news. But when Galen is on after top of the hour, we'll, of course, have our normal small talk with Galen and find out, you know, how his weekend went and how what we need to know about the blood supply, which is mm-hmm. what Galen comes on to talk about. But I want to keep the, the conversation going. Mm-hmm. If you have a candidate you want to pitch for, I haven't talked to you a whole lot about the two candidates uh, for sheriff. Yeah, and that's a another thing. People are thinking it's all about the presidential election, but we've got these local elections, and they're all very important because they all affect us on a local level. On Billy Woods' uh, website, he uh, talks about his experience. He says, for 26 years, I have had the fortunate opportunity to gain knowledge through various units of supervisory positions that I have held to include patrol officer, special deployment units such as undercover street crimes for targeting commercial burglaries and undercover by officer, B-U-Y, as in buying something, Mm -hmm. for the drug task force, field training officer, in-house instructor, traffic officer, motorcycle officer, motorcycle instructor, traffic homicide investigator, reconstructionist, Mm -hmm. patrol sergeant, special operations supervisor, lieutenant, and watch commander. On uh, Dennis McFadden's, he has also an impressive list of uh, qualifications. Three decades of military and law enforcement service. Dennis is experienced, educated, dedicated, a past president and past vice president of the Rotary. Um, With the Marion County Sheriff's Department also. Gosh, you yeah. know, they're all, they're both local, okay? Yeah, no, I was <laughs> just I'm trying to read from here, so... Uh, yeah, he worked uh, three decades in corrections, patrol deputy, mm-hmm. the uh, school resource officer, patrol sergeant, district commander, field office, field force commander, watch commander, decorated army veteran. Yeah. Uh, so both guys, both guys who want to be the next ca- uh, sheriff of Marion County, very impressive guys. Uh, captain Dennis McFadden, he was a captain, he retired. Mm-hmm. He attended uh, Marion County Public Schools, uh, graduated from Vanguard in 1985 got a Bachelor of Arts degree in the Criminal Justice from St. Leo, Associate of Arts degree in Criminal Justice from Central Florida Community College. It goes on and on. What I'm reading to you is from their websites. I'm not trying to pitch one or the other. Mm -mm. I'm just telling you, if you want to, you can pitch for them. I'm asking you to pitch, uh, to campaign for the candidates, whether it's uh, for the president, 
for the, sh- the local sheriff, for any congressman that you're supporting, for any county commissioner that you're supporting. Mm-hmm. Um, we would love to hear from you. Let me squeeze one in. If we if we uh, don't have enough time, you'll be able to hang on at the end of the break. Good morning. You're on the air. Hey, good morning. This is Bishop John Jackson calling. How are you, Larry? Hey. Hello, Robin. Good morning. Good morning to you all. I am um, campaigning for Donald Trump. Um, as unusual as it might be, as an African American, a native New Yorker, uh, you know, there are no perfect individuals anywhere. Uh, but the thing is, I believe that we are ready for a person who is not a politician, but a person who is a statesman. And I believe that an individual that has a global enterprise and has worked within the infrastructure of the business world, has the ability uh, to function as a leader and to balance things out for all people. This is not really a Republican or a Democratic issue or a black or white issue. It's a national issue, the future of our country is at state, and I'm standing with him. Thank you, Bishop. I have to take a break, but you're welcome to call back, okay? Thank you. Have a great day. Thank, Thank you. you. We'll be right back. Ocala, Gainesville, The Villages, 1370 AM, 96.3 FM, The Source. Fox News Radio, I'm Pat O'Neill. Just before the election, good news is for Hillary Clinton. FBI Director James Comey, after checking emails on the laptop of ex-Congressman Anthony Weiner, says there's still no evidence to warrant criminal charges against Clinton. Campaigning in Michigan, Donald Trump said Clinton is guilty and urged supporters to get out the vote. And now it's up to the American people to deliver justice at the ballot box. A Clinton spokesman says the campaign is glad the issue is resolved, but it could have been settled before the first letter was sent. Fox's Rachel Sutherland. In Oklahoma, 5.0 earthquake rattled residents of Cushing and other towns. I just heard the whole house shaking, and I went outside. I heard the rumbling in the ground. The quake centered near a key oil hub, but no major damage or injuries reported. And Philadelphia commuters will be riding the rails again as seven-day transit strike has ended. Service gradually being restored today. Full service expected tomorrow. Fox News. We report. You decide. insult women. It's all talk. Well, here we go again. It's really bad judgment. Issues, not insults. She should be ashamed of herself. The time for talk is over. Now, it's America's turn to make its voice heard. Fox News Channel has election night covered, fair and balanced, up-to-the-minute exit polls, breaking race results and powerful analysis from the best team in politics. Plus, it all happens live from our new state-of-the-art studio. Fox News Channel has election night covered because we are America's election headquarters. In-depth, insightful, intelligent. Get tuned in 10 a.m. Future Maria Bartolomeu on final. Every Sunday, Maria sitting down with biggest players in Washington and Wall Street, asking the tough questions and bringing a new perspective on the nation's most pressing issues. Every Sunday, tune in 10 a.m. Eastern to Sunday Morning Futures with Maria Bartiromo on Fox News Channel. Don't miss it. Hi, this is JP from Penn Flooring here in Ocala. I would like to invite you to come in and visit our spacious showroom where we have solutions for every style and budget. From wall-to-wall carpet to hardwood floors and tiles, we have an unsurpassed selection of flooring. At Penn Flooring, we've provided quality customer service with a family touch for over 25 years. Visit our website at penflooring.com or come by our showroom, 1201 Southwest 17th Street, just over the bridge. Penn Flooring, quality customer service with a family touch. Attention passengers for flight 1370. The plane has been delayed at its departure point and will be at least two hours late. We apologize for any inconvenience. Are you serious? It took us over an hour to get here, two hours going through security and getting our tickets, and now we have to wait another two hours. Yeah, it's beautiful here, but we're inside this overcrowded airport all day because the plane is stuck in bad weather. This is the last time we ever do this. When we get back, we're going to Cal Aviation and getting our pilot's license. Yeah, we've been talking about that long enough. It's about time we did it. Then we could just fly ourselves and never have to deal with this mess again. Right. No long lines, no full body groping security, no baggage checks. Not to mention never losing your luggage. Remind me why we haven't done that? Well, we're idiots. Oh, right. Uh, Attention all passengers for flight 1370. It looks like the plane is going to be delayed a little bit longer. The airline has lost the pilot's luggage. Isn't it time you got your pilot's license? Call Ocala Aviation today. 352-861-7484. That's 352-861-7484. Hey, you earned it. Call today. Here are the cap-
categories. I'll take Mike Scott Plumbing for a thousand, please, Alex. Answer. Daily double. I'll wager five thousand. All right. Here is the clue. PU is the type of this complication. What is a sewage backup? Yes, that's right. It's all fun and games until something happens to you, like a septic system failure or a clogged drain or line, leaving you saying P.U. But not to worry. Mike Scott Plumbing is there to get you out of that jeopardy and back on track. And they don't charge extra for nights, weekends, or holidays. From septic pumping to lawn irrigation to high-efficiency water heaters, at Mike Scott Plumbing, if water runs through it, we do it. Stop by one of the newly renovated showrooms in Hernando or Wildwood or call today, 237-2888. That's 237-2888. Mike Scott. Hi, I'm Seth with AA Lock, Dock, and Security. Have you ever thought about the locks or security on your house or business? Have you ever wondered why the keys to your new car cost so much? Well, at AA Lock, Dock, and Security, we can help with securing your valuables. We can even replace those expensive transponder keys. We can give you the knowledge that no one else will. Call AA Lock, Dock, and Security at 867-1965. That's 867-1965. All right, five minutes after 8 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. It's, uh, let me tell you what the temperature is real quickly. It is a nice day. It's a nice Monday. It's 62 degrees. Temperature's climbing today to uh, 81, it says here. Tomorrow, things cool off about 3 degrees. 78 is the high. In fact, upper 70s is the whole rest of the week. Look at this Thursday night. 47 is the expected low Thursday night. But otherwise, it's in the mid-50s. Galen Unold is on the phone with us this morning from Life South Community Blood Center. And I've already told him off the air that in addition to the, the normal chat we do with Galen, uh, I, I don't have an actual segment prepared because I wanted listeners to continue to call in and give us their reason. A campaign for somebody you are supporting. We will not argue with you. I'm not going to. I'm not in debate mode, and and no. uh, so I know it's hard because when you say something that I, I want to snap back, I kind of hold back. <laughs> uh, but if you're pitching for Hillary, you know, go ahead. Feel free to do that. If you're pitching for Billy Woods or or for Mr. McFadden, um, feel free to do that. Any of the congressional candidates, uh, uh, even Michelle Stone, she's running against a write-in, so yeah, you pitch for the write-in <laughs> or pitch, yeah. pitch for yeah. Michelle. And yeah, you're right. You're maybe the writing guy needs a little bit of help. I I don't know. Yeah. Hey, Galen, how you doing? Hey, good morning, Larry, Robin. How are y'all? Good. The biggest news in your world between you and Robin, Robin went to a hockey game. Yep. That was fun. Yeah. My first ever. Yeah. It was great. I, and I've said this many times, hockey is the best sport to watch in person as far as sheer excitement because it kept you catch so many things in person that you never see uh, on TV or anything else. So, um it's amazing. I love hockey. Any fights from? Did you see any fights? Yeah, there were a couple, but they weren't. You know, are they real, Galen? Huge. I always wondered how was there always a fight in that, in that particular sport? It's it's, it's got to be. Well, so you know, they they've really changed uh, fighting. It, it, they used to fight a lot more, but well, the, the reason they're fighting is because they're trying to protect one of their players, and and so hockey hockey fights have a real purpose. Um, you know, typically, if say you take a cheap shot against their star uh, of the team, then they're going to have a what they call a goon or an enforcer to go in there to make sure that you don't do that again, because there has to be rep- you know there has to be repercussions. There may not be a penalty, um, but you're definitely going to have to send a signal to the other guy saying, "Look, we're not going to accept that." So who, who because would- hockey hockey is all about who is the toughest. Um, it is very much a tough man's game. It's very much about I'm more macho than you are. So who would you least like to get into a fight with in a bar? A hockey player or a football player or a baseball player? What sport is the, is it going to be? The, uh, is it the hockey guy? Is he going to be the toughest? Oh, it's definitely the hockey guy. Really? Hockey guys are, are they, they, first of all, they're used to fighting on thin little iron blade right? <laughs> so you put them on where they can actually put their whole foot on the ground they're going to do damage they are very sh- uh, they're big and they're also extremely quick uh, I- I've always believed that uh, hockey hockey players are, the, are some of the best athletes in the world so they're in great shape because if you've ever skated for more than five minutes you understand how exhausting it is um, basically, they sprint up and down the ice, and, and 
and they're big human beings, and they have usually have massive hands because they you know they they wear those gloves. So uh, hockey players, you don't want to mess with a hockey player. They usually have a big don't. stick too. They're usually carrying a big stick. Yeah, right? That, that's right. Well, if you use your stick in a fight, then you're going to get suspended for a couple of games, and that breaks the <laughs> etiquette. But uh, you know, you don't want to fight with a hockey player. You just don't because they're going to. You don't challenge them. You don't go chest to chest with them because they will fight you. That's what hockey players do. And uh, Shannon told me that last week the goalie for the uh, uh, Tampa Bay Lightning, the puck came at him so fast that it knocked his uh, front teeth out. It hit it. It hit his mask, and it it just you know messed up his. You know, knocked out his they were teeth. Real so teeth? they had, yeah. Real so teeth. they had to. So first yeah, hockey. To get it. Hockey players don't have teeth. I mean, that's just part <laughs> of it. Oh gosh! <laughs> All right, uh, we opened up a can of worms. I think I don't know if this is politics or or sports. Either way, the phone line is open. We just want to uh, open the phone line today. Good morning. You're on the air. Yeah. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, back in the seventies, the Rangers had a substitute goaltender by the name of Don Simmons. And he was aggressive about defending the crease. And the man had a third eye. He knew when the referees were not looking. And if you were hanging in that crease, you got the stick across your shins. <laughs> okay. Oh my God. All right. I'm lost. I don't even know what that is. All right. Yeah. I'll have Galen explain it. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Okay. Have a good day. All right. Galen, help, help me. Wait, out. Which, part, which part are you lost on? Crease. What the heck is the which crease? Part? The crease is the part, man. How many? You've watched so many hockey games. You got to know what a crease is. I don't. The crease is the small area right in front of the uh, net, okay. in front of the goal. That's where the goalie is. <laughs> I've never watched a hockey game. That's right. Game. That's the crease. I have not watched oh, a hockey game. Oh, I thought you used to run security for the uh, I, I did. Long I, Island, I, was I, was at, I was at many, many hockey games, but I don't think I watched one. I think I'm, I, I, and I wasn't security. I was clean up. Yeah, I didn't do anything. Oh, okay, <laughs> there wasn't much to do in a hockey game. You had to wait till after it was all over. Okay. Good morning, you're on the air. Uh, good morning. Uh, this goes back a ways, but uh, New York Rangers had a, a hockey player by the name of Phil Esposito, and he was known to have the sharpest elbows <laughs> in in the sport. So in other words, I guess he could really elbow his way around when it got into a, you know, a tussle or a, you know, a group fight over the puck or something. Wow. And uh, he was uh, one one tough guy, that's for sure. Uh, have a great day, guys. Thank you. Wow. The referees are great skaters too, because they had to stay out of the way of the sticks and the and the hockey guys. Yeah, absolutely. You know, the thing about Phil Esposito is that he's the reason why the Tampa Bay Lightning exists. Uh, so that, that Phil Esposito was part of that group that brought him there. You know, my fa- we, we had uh, my father had season tickets to the Tampa Bay Lightning for the first six years of their existence. So I, you know, they're they're so much fun to watch, a lot of fun, and they get great fan support. So that must be that statue that's out front. Then the guy holding a hockey stick and a, standing on a puck. That must have been Phil Esposito. Then uh, I think it is. Yeah, oh, okay. I think it is. I couldn't make out his name on huh. the stick. See that? When it's not all about politics. No. By the way, I want to be the guy known as the guy with the, the sharpest elbows in radio. <laughs> <laughs> I just yeah, think- the, the, the reason they said that is because I don't want to get too technical, but he would. What, what the Rangers did back in Phil Esposito's did is they just did a, what they call a dump and chase, and so they would just dump the puck into the corner, and then Phil Esposito was a was a, not a very fast skater, but he was a he was quick, and then he could dig out the puck and then sling it up, and and then they, that's how they score. But that's also why they never won a Stanley Cup with Phil Esposito. So. Did, I, did anybody cheer the Zamboni driver? Yeah. yeah Always. Well, it depends. <laughs> you know, he'll get booed in some places <laughs> and then cheered in others. But, uh, yeah, it's the Zamboni. So the, it's, one of, it's one of the interesting things to watch at a hockey game because it's like, oh, watch. I'm, I'm literally watching him freeze ice. <laughs> yeah, he's freezing ice, and I think it's softer than uh, than than figure skaters. I think figure skaters have harder ice Correct. than That's things. absolutely right. Okay, yeah, because here's okay. I, just to bring back my old ancient memory of this, I, I didn't really watch one game, but I was there for many of them. Mm-hmm. And one of the jobs that we do uh-huh. when you're on maintenance, I didn't work security; I did maintenance. You have a squeegee. 
basically of a squeegee. And when the Zamboni is doing his thing, there's a ton of water that comes off of that stuff. And your job is to push the water to the drain. That's the whole job. Constantly just push. Oh, and you gotta, I mean, all, all the Zamboni does is layer a fresh sheet of water and then freeze it, and it freezes on top. So that's why it's not as... The ice just isn't set as cold as it is for figure skating. Because figure skating, they don't want the ice to chunk up. They, they want the point to stick and all of that. So. But what you don't see... Now, this is, you know, a long time ago, so I don't know if they've changed the way they do it. But what you don't see is all the ice melting Mm -hmm. because it's constantly melting. It's constantly melting and being refrozen. Mm -hmm. Uh, Galen, can I ask you, uh, the the phone is, gosh, ringing. This is more important to people than than politics. (laughs) Well, yeah, because everybody wants it to be over. (laughs) All right. All right. uh, So how is the blood supply? And then we'll do that, and then we'll come back and we'll continue this. Uh, Whatever you want to talk about. It's just everything's open. How is the blood supply? Uh, we're pretty good. We have just over a seven-day blood supply, and again, we're we're just weeks away from from Thanksgiving, and we just need people to get out there and um, vote and donate blood. One of, one of the key indicators for people who, if you're a voter, then you're more likely to be a blood donor, and if you're a blood donor, there's a ninety-eight point nine percent chance that you're a registered voter. Uh, it's the only common denominator uh, for for blood donors. Everything else is kind of nebulous, but. The one factor there is is if you're a vo- if you're registered to vote, uh, if you're a blood donor, then you're registered to vote, and, and I think that's kind of a cool thing. And we're we're actually a voting precinct in, in many of our areas, including Gainesville and really? Montgomery, Alabama. Yeah, so we love that opportunity to welcome the community and just come out, give the gift of life, and donate blood. And right now we need platelets, so call us at six two two three five four four. The one thing I want to in, uh, interject here is that I noticed when I was looking through the different uh, candidates' uh, websites this morning that a number of them have sh- photographs of themselves donating blood because that Absolutely. that symbolizes yeah. their their willingness to to give to the community. Mm-hmm. Isn't that isn't that something? You know, it's absolutely true. And we've had many politicians over the years that have. have you know, hey, I want to make a big deal. I'm going to come in and donate blood, and I want them to photograph it. And, and in many cases, we've said, no, it's not what we're about. Because we've actually had some say, look, I'm not eligible, but I want people to think that I'm a blood donor. We're like, we're not any <laughs> oh, part of that. Oh, no. Oh, no. I'm going to do that. Oh, so, no. And then, of course, you know, it, it's just uh, it's it's one of those things. I, I know one of the American Red Cross and would go to the Senate House, uh, to the Senate, I'm sorry, to... Um, have blood drives they they would every single one of them had a photographer taking pictures of them while they're donating wow so yeah. it's 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 a, it's not sad I, you it know i mean sad. if you're gonna, it is if you're sad. gonna donate it is sad. you know how many okay, well let me ask you this um how many people take a picture of themselves after they donate blood how is that different if they're bragging about themselves one way or the other yeah, but those are the regular donors. Well, those are okay. the political if they oh, no, 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 they're still bragging about themselves. That's true. But you know what? We're how we're seeing it. We're seeing it as we. I don't normally give, but I'm going to give right now just for this campaign, and then you'll never I, see I, it a lot. Right? Uh, no, I, I don't. They weren't doing that at the Senate because they were already elected. Oh, okay. I think they were just donating, well, and, that, and I think they just wanted credit for donating. No. And I, I don't. Who am I to say that they can't well, have it? Uh, uh, well, po- there's so many selfies stick on the blood mobile, it's sad. On the positive oh. side, on the positive side, <laughs> it does show that they recognize the importance of what they're doing, and they want other people to see that they're doing something important. So, And if it gets somebody else to donate blood, I'm all for it. There you go. Uh, that's good. You know, so that, that's why I'm never going to, I'm never going to you know, bemoan anybody for taking a selfie on the blood movie. Well, two, Take it. Two, two businesses that you should thank, because they're also on yes. that, on your side with this. Uh, Palm Garden in Penn Flooring, Palm Garden Vocala Health and Rehabilitation Center. Go check them out at 2700 Southwest 34th Street. Be sure to thank them for uh, sponsoring Galen's uh, appearance on WOCA each morning from Life South. Uh, and ask them to give you a tour, and you'll find out for yourself why people choose Palm Garden of Ocala for their health and rehabilitative needs. Penn Flooring has some beautiful flooring. Remodel your home from the floor up and uh, see the showroom so you can figure out which kind of flooring you would like. 1201 Southwest 17th Street is the address, just over the McKay Williams Bridge. We will take a break and be right back. If you want to call in with your thoughts on which candidate you want to uh, campaign for, 
You can do that. The only rule we have is that you can't call if you are the candidate. Uh, and, of course, if you want to call up and talk about hockey or blood or anything else, that's all, all open as well. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> The weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Safe boating is no accident. Onshore breeze continues, so watch for rough surf and rip currents at the beaches. Otherwise, it's going to be a partly sunny day, high of 78 to 81. Patchy clouds tonight, a low 58 to 68. A mix of sun and clouds tomorrow looks nice, a high of 78 to 81. Partly sunny and high of 75 to 80 Wednesday. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Maggie Johnson. Career Source Citrus Levy Marion brings together business and community partners, economic development leaders, and educational providers to connect employers with qualified, skilled talent, and job seekers with employment and career development opportunities. Tune in the first and third Wednesday of each month at 9:30 a.m. to Career Source Citrus Levy Marion and learn how they can help you. Hi, I'm Leah Caruso with Strive Rehabilitation, inviting you to join me Thursday at 11 a.m. for Health Matters. Ocala Health and Strive have teamed up to bring you the latest information on good health services available to you right here at home. This vital information will help you make informed decisions about your health. So don't forget to join me here at 11 a.m. Thursday. It's news you can use from Ocala Health, Strive, and your friends here at WOCA. Palm Garden wants to get to the heart of the matter. If you've been in the hospital as a cardiac patient, maybe you have a pacemaker or congestive heart failure or an arrhythmia, or perhaps you're a heart bypass patient, then consider Palm Garden as your rehab choice. With proven outcomes, second to none, Palm Garden fixes broken hearts. Call today at 854-6262. That's 854-6262. Veterans Day in the U.S. is also known as Armistice Day in other parts of the world, and it honors the many military who have fought for freedom. It is also the anniversary of the signing of the armistice that ended World War I. Major hostilities formally ended at the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month in 1918. The folks at The Voice of South Marion join you in remembering military past and present. I'm Walt Dartland, and I'm running for Congress in District 2. Because you deserve a choice to get money out of politics, to receive a better affordable health care, to make sure your tax dollars are respected, to keep promises to veterans to protect Florida's environment. I'm a Marine veteran, a former Deputy Attorney General and Consumer Advocate. I'm Walt Dartland, asking for your vote on November 8th. Paid for and approved by Walt Dartland, Democrat for Congress. All right, 21 minutes after 8 o'clock, Aileen Unold is on the phone from Life South Community Blood Centers, and uh, we're talking politics, and we're talking hockey. And, uh, and my, my past with hockey was, had nothing to do with actual playing the game. I worked at the Coliseum, where it used to be the home place of the New York Islanders. Now they've moved to the, is it called the Barclay Center? Galen, in, in Brooklyn, right? Yeah. I know where well, they I know yeah. where they moved to. I just don't know anything about the place. But Yeah, it's the same place as the Nets play. Uh, which which one of our Uber drivers I don't know if I shared this with you, but he was saying he got he his wife got him a gift, seven hundred dollar seats at the Nets game. Yeah, that was amazing. So, yeah. Seven hundred dollars. I don't Gosh. know if that meant for both seats or just one of them. Well, let's see, Shannon knows a friend and her company buys a box seat for the whole season Uh and sometimes shannon gets invited to go and it was seventy five thousand dollars for the box seat for the the box and that's and then it's two thousand dollars per game for all the amenities for the drinks and the food and all that yeah wow so that was pretty cool wow uh good morning you're on the air uh good morning larry robin Sonny again. Hi, Sonny. Uh, you know, they, my son played hockey all the way through college and passed that somewhat. And we used to hate to follow the figure skaters onto the ice because they actually damaged the ice more so than yep. the, the hockey players, especially when they did their jumps 
and they did their uh, pirouettes because of the figure skating skates had a, a deeper, longer point on the front so that they could uh, do these pirouettes and uh, jumps and things without, you know, oh, losing their stance. Huh. Didn't know that. I knew that. Yeah, it's called a toe hook. It was, uh, they, we, you know, really big holes if you've seen some of them after they got <laughs> off the never, ice. I never have. I never have. But anyway, <laughs> my thing is, I think uh, somebody ought to be paying the taxpayer for Obama's use for Air Force One to ride around all over the country to campaign for Hillary. I don't remember a president uh, doing that as much as this guy is. Yeah, I've been reading that on Facebook a lot, too. Yeah. All right. All right. Thank Have you, Sonny. Thank you, Sonny. Um, yeah. Your, uh, your main source of news is Facebook. That's a problem. <laughs> Be honest. You know, and that's and and you know, you know, know, wait a minute, wait a minute now. I gotta argue with you on this one. If you, that's that felt like an insult a little bit. If you think, yeah, it is. Galen, I read every newspaper in Florida every morning. Yeah, I know you do. I know you do. But But I'm just. But I wasn't saying that. But I'm just saying. Is is if if your main source of news is Facebook, that's a problem. And obviously, you get your source of news from other locations. Please, so it's not a problem. I get it at three o'clock for a reason. Yeah, I, d- I don't get it at three o'clock to read Facebook. My God! Right. Good morning. No, no, no. I, I think you're misunderstanding what I'm saying. Uh, maybe I did. Good morning. You're on the air. Yeah. Good morning. See, the one and only hockey game I ever witnessed was back up in Milwaukee. It was a semi-pro league call, and they were called the Milwaukee Admirals. I think Robin mm-hmm. might remember that. I do remember the name. Yeah, and they were they were in a championship oh. game in Milwaukee, and a good friend of mine got free tickets from his brother, who was the team dentist. We had the best seats in the house. The Admirals won the championship. We got the chance to go into the locker room. What an experience. I went home drenched in champagne. Oh, how cool. That is marvelous. I love that. that but is- I've never seen a hockey game after that, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, once you see the best, I mean, you know, everything else is a disappointment, right? <laughs> yes, it was quite an ex- quite an experience, especially in the locker room part of it. I mean, they were really having a ball in there, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That is great. That was fun. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see what do we have here. We have another button to push. <laughs> Good morning. You're on the air. <laughs> yeah, good morning, good morning. Uh, now I'll make my pitch. Um, you know, if you're, if, if at this late date you're you're undecided or can't uh, bring yourself to vote for either the donkey or the or the uh, the elephant, uh, consider uh, my Constitution Party candidate, Mister Darrell Castle. Uh, that's all I'll say. Uh, I think Darrell uh, Castle should have called us. Yeah, I think so. But he didn't. So. No. Yeah, well, you know, I, 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 I emailed the campaign office several times during the election season. I have no idea why they didn't take the offer. Yeah, I don't either. But that's something they should learn. They yeah. should. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Jim. Appreciate it. All right. Have know, a good day. Jim yeah. was great. He would send us copies of those. You know. I just, I just don't understand it. I just don't. Probably why nobody's heard of them. Well, that's it. I mean, you know, if 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 you're a third party candidate, you've you've got a, a handicap going in, mm-hmm. right? So you you do the best you can with what's out there, and what is out there, if it's being offered to you, Jim is probably he, he just told us he sent it several times. Right, exactly. I mean, you would have had at least the listenership, at least this one. You yeah. know, uh, I really believe a lot of these these party candidates don't want to win; they just want to you know, stand for something that's different than everything else, but they they really don't want to win. They don't Maybe. want to put in the time, energy, or effort to win. I mean, it, if, you, if you can't call into a radio show that wants to have you on, yeah. um, ten minutes, then that's on you. You, you don't want to win. Yeah. You just don't want to win. Yeah. Yeah. Uh... Uh, so, so the other argument Galen and I were having—that's not an argument, but the other conversation. 
<laughs> During the break, he was saying the word ice has never been part of the name ice hockey, uh, or hockey, rather. Oh. And I remember, now, I'm, I'm pretty sure it was always called ice hockey. It was up in Wisconsin. It was and then And hockey. then they dropped the word ice. Like he said, it's the National Hockey League, not the National Ice Hockey League. Yeah, but in the beginning, from Wisconsin, it was ice hockey. It went to because ice you hockey. were because it was as opposed to what street hockey, field hockey, right, whatever exactly. else there we was. We had all of them up there. Knock hockey. Did you ever, did you ever play knock hockey? <laughs> <laughs> did you ever play knock hockey, Galen? <laughs> they had one of those in the bar. No, we were at. no you never played <laughs> knock, knock hockey. <laughs> uh, I don't know what that is. It's air hockey without the air. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this is really before your time. Yeah. All it was was a board, and you had a hockey stick. It was you know something you played in your living room or in your basement or something, mm-hmm. and you basically knocking the knocking the thing around like you do with I, with air hockey, but there's no air. It's just right. just just sliding on the board. Yeah. <laughs> okay. There you go. See, you you grew up in a world with with electronics. Yeah. You just just. He <laughs> just, Get your he just missed all that fun stuff. <laughs> all right, uh, again, where's the uh, Bloodmobile today? Bloodmobile today, Larry, is at the uh, Walmart on Bahia Avenue. Oh, and Silver Spring Shores. There it is. Nice. All right, are you done voting? You did your voting already or no? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I right. voted early. I wonder if it's true that tomorrow there will be uh, uh, lines that are five hours long. There probably uh, I- I'm be. sure there are. I mean, if you're... I mean, it, it, I, it's been open for two weeks. Yeah. So I, I'm just curious as to what the voter turnout will be. I think that, that's, let's be honest, that's going to decide the election is uh, who can get out there vote the most. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I don't, I really don't, I'm not sure how Trump can win, but people need to get out there and vote for whoever they want to win. That's it. That's for sure. Or he's got no chance of winning. Can't or think. your candidate has no thank chance. Thank you for what you do. We got to go. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye bye. O'Neill. Just before the election, good news for Hillary Clinton. FBI Director James Comey, after checking emails on the laptop of ex Congressman Anthony Weiner, says there's still no evidence to warrant criminal charges against Clinton. Campaigning in Michigan, Donald Trump said Clinton is guilty and urged supporters to get out the vote. And now it's up to the American people to deliver justice at the ballot box. A Clinton spokesman says the campaign is glad the issue is resolved, but it could have been settled before the first letter was sent. Fox is Rachel Sutherland. In Oklahoma, 5.0 earthquake rattled residents of Cushing and other towns. I just heard the whole house shaking and I went outside and heard the rumbling in the ground. The quake centered near a key oil hub, but no major damage or injuries reported. And Philadelphia commuters will be riding the rails again as seven-day transit strike has ended. Service gradually being restored today. Full service expected tomorrow. Fox News. We report. You decide. insult women. It's all talk. Well, here we go again. It's really bad judgment. Issues, not insults. She should be ashamed of herself. The time for talk is over. Now, it's America's turn to make its voice heard. Fox News Channel has election night covered, fair and balanced, up-to-the-minute exit polls, breaking race results and powerful analysis from the best team in politics. Plus, it all happens live from our new state-of-the-art studio. Fox News Channel has election night covered because we are America's election headquarters. In-depth, insightful, intelligent. Get it all. Tune in 10 a.m. Eastern to Sunday Morning Futures with Maria Bartiromo on Fox News Channel. Every Sunday, Maria's sitting down with the biggest players in Washington and Wall Street, asking the tough questions and bringing a new perspective on the nation's most pressing issues. Every Sunday, tune in 10 a.m. Eastern to Sunday Morning Futures with Maria Bartiromo on Fox News Channel. Don't miss it. Howdy folks, for over four decades we at Dairy Queen have been proud to serve our customers with the finest and freshest cook-to-order quick-service comfort foods in the world. For instance, our new Philly steak and cheese sandwiches with grilled peppers and onions on an artisan focaccia bread bun. So steaming hot and yummy you won't believe it. We also added seasoned potato skins filled with queso cheese and bacon. Wow, they're tasty. So come on down to Dairy Queen at Silver Springs where we always treat you like kings and queens. 
Hey, this is Matt Wilkerson with Verizon. Do you have teenage drivers or elderly parents that drive? I have what you need. It's the new Hum device by Verizon. Plugs directly into your car and sends alerts to your cell phone on the location, speed, and driving habits. And you set boundary alerts. You can call and speak live with an ASC certified mechanic. And if you have an accident and can't respond, Hum will automatically send for help. All this and more for just $10 a month. And if you're in Marion County, I'll even deliver and set it up for free. Call me, 352-528-0020. You have that drip coming down from the corner of the room, but where did it start from? Mm. Own Dry Roofing can and will fix it right the first time using quality materials and will deal honestly and fairly with you, period. You can find Bone Dry Roofing on their website, Bone Dry Roofing, LLC.com, and Facebook at Bone Dry Roofing, LLC. Do it right before your roof needs a tarp to keep the elements out. Bone Dry Roofing stands behind their work to help make your home safe and secure, plus they have financing available. Remember, if you're not bone dry, then you're all wet. We all know the story of David and Goliath. It proves the underdog can win against all the odds. I'm Walt Dartland, and I'm running to become your congressman for District 2. And I'm in an epic battle for votes, but I'm not afraid to fight for your vote. I'm a veteran who proudly served the United States Marine Corps, and as a Marine, I will not let you down. But I need you to help me so I can fight for you in Washington. On November 8th, cast your vote for me, Walt Dartland, for Congress. Paid for and approved by Walt Dartland, Democrat for Congress. Hey everybody, did you know that there is a black bear sanctuary right here in the Ocala National Forest? While FWC has postponed the bear hunt this year, there are still perils that these magnificent creatures face. Forest Animal Rescue is finishing their state-of-the-art sanctuary on 80 acres in the Ocala National Forest. The last phase of construction is the on-site clinic to help with bear cub rehabilitation and release. Forest Animal Rescue is a 501c3. Your contribution is entirely tax-deductible. Visit forestanimalrescue.org. Veterans Day in the U.S. is also known as Armistice Day in other parts of the world, and it honors the many military who have fought for freedom. It is also the anniversary of the signing of the armistice that ended World War I. Major hostilities formally ended at the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month in 1918. The folks at the Voice of South Marion view in remembering military past and... Ocala's Information Station, 1370 WOCA.